Hey, welcome to Fear No Maths. Maths most of the time, at least till you get to a particular class, is mostly a chill subject to learn. 3 plus 5, 7 into 6, 29 by 3, these are the problems we usually deal with. Say, I have a party and have 4 friends over including me. I have ordered a pizza with 8 slices. How many slices does each one of us get? 8 by 2 equal to 4, right? Simple. We have the numbers, we do the calculations and get the final answer. Easy peasy. Although even doing this takes some amount of practice, the moment we get the hang of it is when all of a sudden X is dropped into the midst of all these numbers. Remember, simple stuff like 5 into 3 all of a sudden become X into Y and you were like what the hell? All of a sudden instead of adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing numbers, we started doing the same thing with letters. Letters which till then we had only used for forming words in the English language. Maths for us completely changed once we entered the world of algebra. Now, algebra the word comes from the Arabic word al-jabra, which was also part of the title of the book written by al khwarizmi in Baghdad around the 800s. Al-jabra means the reunion of broken parts. This name is quite apt because through the centuries, we soon realized that algebra unifies almost all the branches of mathematics. al khwarizmi is also called as the father of algebra because he was the first one to structure most of the concepts such as forming algebraic equations and solving them in a way that we still use to this day. Algebra was a game changer. It completely changed the way we did and looked at maths. It made us realize that we don't even need numbers to do maths. Earlier, I divided 8 slices of pizza among 4 of us friends so that we each got 2. But what if I didn't know how many pizzas I had bought or how many people were there or all I knew was that each person should get a minimum of 2 slices and had no idea about the number of slices I have and the number of people as well. Algebra still allowed us to solve problems like these. Now, here, whenever I don't know a number, I can replace it with a question mark. But these question marks also represent different things. One is for the number of slices and the other is for number of people. So I should be able to differentiate between them as well. And thus, we use letters like X, Y, Z, A, B, C depending on the number of question marks. These are called variables because each of these can change, right? Depending on the number of slices I have, x can be 2 or 4 or 10 and so on. Same goes for all the other variables. On the other hand, algebra also helps us forming patterns. Suppose you have a younger sister or brother and say that you are 3 years older than them. If she is 1, then you are 4, 2, then you are 5, 3, you are 6, 4, you are 7. I can see that this gets boring after a while. What you can see here is that there is clearly a pattern to all this. I can take his or her age to be anything, say a variable x, and your age would be x plus 3. If they are 20, then you are 23, 97, you are 100, and so on. So instead of writing it as a table of numbers, we can represent all this using algebra as simply x plus 3. So now talking about these variables, just like numbers, we can add, subtract, multiply and divide them with each other. We can also multiply a number with a variable, just like say pi into x or 3 into y and so on. But while we multiply variables with each other or with numbers, we avoid writing the multiplication sign itself. It's like instead of saying 5 of those pizza slices, I can directly say 5 pizza slices, right? Multiplication is thus implied. We can also multiply the same variable with itself and write them as x, x square, x cube and so on just like multiplying 2's with each other gives us 2, 2 square, 2 cube etc. Now, when a bunch of these variables and numbers are written together with arithmetic operations between them, we call them algebraic expressions. Think of it like calling a group of words as sentences. A sentence in algebra is basically an expression. When two such algebraic expressions are equated with each other, then we call them equations. Problems in high school algebra therefore rotate around forming expressions like these and equating them with each other to find out the values or what we commonly call solutions or the variables that satisfy them. 
For example, going back to the previous one, if I ask you what age your brother or sister is, if your age is 15, then we can write the equation x plus 3 equal to 15. Here, x plus 3 is one algebraic expression and 15 is the other. Solving this, we can say that their age is 12. Obviously, not all problems are so simple, but this is just to give a basic idea about what actually is going on there. Now, I think some of you might still be thinking why? Is algebra good for anything in the real world or are we just supposed to solve a bunch of tricky problems? Algebra is actually very useful for modeling things in the real world. It's definitely hard to see that when you're just reading it from a math textbook but it's a lot easier to see when you start taking algebraic equations and graphing the solutions. Graphing an equation is like using its different solutions and drawing simple lines and curves that can be used to represent things in real life. For example, there is a whole class of equations in algebra called linear equations because they form straight lines when you graph them. These sort of equations could help you tell how much time it might take to get somewhere or even determine the prices of a group of quantities. Others, called quadratic equations, can be used to design telescope lenses or describe how a ball flies to air. Algebra is used everywhere and all the time. You name the field and it will have applications, especially in science, engineering, economics and computer programming. You might not need algebra to get by in your daily life, but it has truly revolutionized maths. It's like the difference between walking and driving a car. Driving a car is tougher than walking but it opens up to so many possibilities and that is what algebra does in maths. So friends, in this video, we discussed a bit about algebra and why it is a game changer for maths. As mentioned earlier, if you want to dwell into these topics a bit deeper, then have a look at our Flowbook app. So till next time, happy learning.